Nobody knows who invented the automobile. Some authorities say it wasn't really invented at all, but assembled out of bits and pieces that had been invented for other types of machinery long before. It did, however, make its first appearance on the roads of Europe and America about 80 years ago. This was in the gaslight era, a time when people were reading and discussing a classic science fiction chiller called Frankenstein. Frankenstein, of course, was a man who made a monster. He didn't invent it. He assembled it out of assorted bits and pieces. And at first, it was docile and easy to get along with. But somewhere along the line, the monster began getting out of hand. And eventually it hunted its creator down and destroyed him. The parallel between the story of Frankenstein's monster and the American family automobile may be trite and a trifle far-fetched, but it's worth consideration just the same. In its early days, the automobile was an attractive novelty that was owned mainly by rich people and was of very little real consequence to anybody else. But by 1964, the automobile had substantially taken over the entire American economy. Last year, nearly 12 million Americans, or one in every seven hour of our entire labor force, worked either directly or indirectly for the automobile, making automobiles, selling automobiles, or working in automobile-related industries. Last year, we spent more than $8 billion building new automobile roads and highways, and some $3 billion more repairing old ones. And practically all of us were paying for automobiles on the installment plan for a total of about $22 billion in automobile finance credits. Finally, and usually once or twice a day, we had to park all these automobiles somewhere away from home. There's no estimate of the total American real estate acreage devoted to parking lots and parking garages, but the 72 million cars now in this country probably requires something more than 500 square miles for off-street parking. In the country, in the city, in the suburbs, we continue to lay out the endless acres of concrete and blacktop ultimately to be paid with the hard-shell bodies of millions upon millions of two-doors and four-doors, fast-backs and slow-backs, flat-fours and straight-sixes and V8s, in variety and numbers to stagger the imagination and more automobiles are on the way. Each year, we consign about five and a half million to the scrap heap and to the auto graveyards along our suburban and rural highways. But each year, we manufacture more than seven million new automobiles for a net annual addition of over two million to the national total. We have, in fact, become a nation of automobile owners and drivers. And the truth is, that we love our cars. They've become more than mere possessions. They've become a way of life and a state of mind, in spite of the fact that they kill an estimated 50,000 of us each year. We have become fascinated by them, exactly as Frankenstein was fascinated by his monster. And this has created the great urban dilemma of the mid-century. America obviously isn't going to stop buying or using automobiles in ever-increasing numbers. But equally obvious, something will have to be done about the traffic in our metropolitan areas, or our automobiles are certainly going to choke our cities to death in the classic Frankenstein tradition.